Welcome, I'm Uva Brandis coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown University SES. In focus today, aging communities and cities. Average life expectancy in the United States is 76 for men and 81 for women. And for people currently turning 65, life expectancy is even longer. And with 80% of people living in metropolitan areas, creating inclusive communities for aging people is an important urban planning challenge. I'm joined by two leaders at the forefront of reconceptualizing how aging populations are changing communities and changing cities. First, I have Sharon Gino, Chief Operating Officer, Volunteers of America, and Adjunct Professor here at the Urban Planning Program. <clears throat> and Ryan Frederick, founder of Smart Living 360. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So you both represent very different organizations. Sharon, you um, manage a very large national nonprofit organization. Ryan, you founded a very successful startup uh, for-profit company. Why is the issue of aging and cities important to your missions? Well, I think you kicked it off. It, these are the people that we serve as a, as a nonprofit. We're serving vulnerable populations, and our history has been to serve them both in the healthcare side as well as in the affordable housing portfolio. These are the people that, that our, our mission says we should, we should serve. That's great. You know, from our perspective, uh, it's, it complements Sharon's in the sense that with people living so much longer now, there's an opportunity to live really fulfilling lives. And with the, the oldest boomer being 73, uh, and, and 10,000 people a day turning 65, there's a sense with the psychographic of the boomers that they want it differently. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, they tend to be that people don't want to be called seniors now. A term I've heard more recently is perennials. Mm -hmm. This idea of always blooming. And so when you take a mega trend of aging and the mega trend of, of urbanization, when those meet together, I think there's a really interesting opportunity for consumers as well as businesses alike. That's great. So <clears throat> share with us the two or three most important trends that you see related to aging on the one hand and, and the built environment, the physical environment uh, uh, on the other. What, what are you seeing, what are you struggling with in your, in your activities? I mean, to dovetail on what Ryan said, uh, the, the mindset of the people we're serving is changing. Um, preventative care is becoming increasingly important, so the healthcare, the intersection with the healthcare industry, we're really blurring the lines between senior care and independent living, even on the low income levels. And our independent living is going to have elements of preventative care because managed care will force it. Um, but a big component of that, and I really see the problem in cities, is staffing. Um, there's a ginormous staffing and shortage for senior care workers in the United States and the competition for staffing is so much more fierce in urban areas that it really creates some challenges in making those projects work. Interesting. Yeah, we see similar things. I, I think the, 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 the first piece really is related to this idea that the built environment matters a lot and that the right built environment can lead to greater social connections, so staving off loneliness can help give people greater purpose as they age. Uh, it's easier to coordinate different services that, that are there. Um, so the more that people can appreciate the role of the built environment, I think the more likely we'll invest appropriately as municipalities and as, as individuals. I think there's another piece, which uh, Sharon alluded to moments ago, which is around affordability. And housing alone right now is, is, is expensive, but when you look at senior housing or housing with services, it becomes really expensive. So I think there's an opportunity for our society, particularly within cities, given some of the dimensions that we just described, how can we create more affordable options or ones that more of the middle market can truly uh, you know, work for them in this, this idea of living 100-year lives. That's going to become more the norm over time. I'd say the last thing is how do you integrate technology and healthcare? There's ways that actually the built environment itself changes. And so that'll have opportunities for renovations as well as opportunities for, for, for new products as well. Um, and you think of this whole concept of aging in place, you, you know, that's directly tied back to housing and how people think of themselves uh, uh, as, as, and think of uh, a quality of life as they, as they grow older. So let's, let's turn now to um, the social strategies and, you know, planners care a lot about social capital, uh, in inclusive communities. What are you seeing on the community development side? What are some of the strategies that you're, you're, you're engaging? We're, we're really looking to leverage um, hospitals and other health service providers and payers 
in, in coming together and helping us build communities where we can provide those health care services, um, both preventative and, and more acute care services in, in close proximity. The other thing that we've really been experimenting with that I'm really excited about, per my earlier comment, is building workforce housing into our new communities, particularly in cities. Um, one of the biggest challenges to keeping workforce is housing affordability just generally and if we want workers to live in areas in close proximity to serve the, the senior population, we need to provide subsidized opportunities to make that happen because the managed care system and the Medicare and Medicaid systems are not going to enable us to provide a sufficient wage to keep those people aging in place, particularly in urban communities. Right. So from my perspective, I think there's aging in place and there's also aging in community. Mm -hmm. And I think that sort of broader definition allows us to take advantage of different things that a particular community offers. So I, I, I've been um, impressed with like, the World Health Organization and their age-friendly effort to get different municipalities and cities aware of best practices, but that creates a great opportunity for consumers and developers and investors alike because there's not different new models. You know, where can you create new housing models with different cost structures, you know, with technology and healthcare integration, keep people healthy? So it's less about the utilization on the healthcare system, but it's also what we would want. If we have a 100-year lifespan, it'd be great if they're really fulfilling long, healthy lives. And so an opportunity for consumers to see these options, which I think there'll be a lot more of in the future, um, I think will be an exciting outcome. Uh, Sharon, Ryan. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights with me today, and thanks to everyone out there watching. Stay tuned for more insights into cities from the LG Digital Studio at the Georgetown SES.